Come on, let's do it. Let's see who's bad, man. Come on. Come on. So you're really, really an 80s fan. Okay, Princess Buttercup, here's some more stuff for you. Stick around. It's I Love the 80s Strikes Back, and this is 1987 again. The flicks. I die, boy. Have fun storming the castle. The fashions. Ugh, the two week. Hey, how you doing? The two weeks. A totally awesome year that gave us even more burning questions. Could anyone take parenting tips from Bob Saget? Don't be afraid to say no. Kids need limits. Just how fat were the fat boys? The this was fat. And is there really anything wrong with stealing a baby? <laughs> the answers to those questions... Everybody's favorite hood ornament, Tawny Katane. Excuse me, there's an areola in the shot. Because you can't get enough ease. Shut up, I said! Because you're still waiting for Beauty and the Beast to hook up. Admit it. This is 1987 Strikes Back. Vincent, you are so beautiful. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. I have seen Beauty and the Beast. This is the show about the woman who lives above the ground and the beast who lives below the ground. And where the twain shall meet, we find out. They meet here, in the heart space. It's a very romantic show. It's worth everything. The only thing that was weird about this was that the beast never turns into a normal guy. He just always is a hideous beast. I did not respond to it. It may be because I was 14 and <laughs> I don't want to be touched by a beast. I think Vincent is hot. Vincent's a beast. What kind of woman doesn't want a beast? You know, the only thing is he has that no lip problem. And I like a guy with lips. So otherwise, I'd go for him. To me, the beast was not unattractive. He read poetry. His hair was fantastic. He dressed wonderfully. His house did not smell so good, but he lived in the sewer. So we have to forgive him. What did the Beauty and the Beast do every week? How did they keep the whole show going? Well, here we are again. You're still a beast, and I'm a beautiful woman, and we can't have sex. Why couldn't they have sex? The 80s were a time of rigid social mores. It was simply unacceptable to most people to see Linda Hamilton get porked by a giant beast. No kiss. Do they ever French kiss? I was kind of hoping this series would start off a whole trend of chicks banging animals, you know, but... No luck, except for Madonna. It makes me laugh thinking about Linda Hamilton and the Beast having sex. Oh my God, I just think it'd be just a lot of blood and tears. Knowing that I am the cause of that pain is more than I can bear to live with. It mocks our dream. I'm being overly cynical. Maybe it was about a deeper love. Like, yeah, that's what it was about. Here I go again, again on my own. Going down the only road I ever know. Here I go again was everywhere. Couldn't get away from White Snake at that point. I gotta say, it got me because it was so epic and uplifting. As far as I was concerned, it was a short film starring Tony. <laughs> Tawny Katane, who had an Olympic gold medal gymnastic performance on the hood of an expensive car. My wife at the time, Tawny, was a very, very agile, great seductress with the camera. So basically, we just let Tawny go for it and let the cameras roll. We should utilize it more in dating. Go, well, hold on, let me say something. Leap on the car and then be very sphinx-like. You get to see the, the flash of one of her breasts when she's hanging out of the car which actually passed us by in the edit room. Excuse me, there's an areola in the shot. I know. I know, damn it, just roll. That's why I love the 80s. It had nothing to do with music. 
scruples was a thing that no one in the 80s actually had. So much so that they actually made a game out of it. Your friend set you up with a blind date. He's not exactly what you had in mind. Do you go through with it? it depends. On what? On whether or not he sees me first. Scruples, it's a game and more. Your current lover asks you, how many sex partners have you had in the past? Do you tell the truth? Never. You divide by a hundred. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. You sign on to do a photo shoot with a top magazine. However, when you get there, the photographers ask you to fully disrobe. But then he offers you $5,000. Do you pose in the buff? For $5,000, I'll pose in the buff and give him some. Because I got a credit card bill to pay. Friends Loan, you have few movies for your VCR. One mislabeled tape shows your friends frolicking nude on a Riviera beach. Do you watch the rest of the vacation tape? Hell yeah. I'm that in, baby. I have a potluck party. Everybody, come over. Look at what we're watching tonight, y'all. Would you be impotent the rest of your life for $1 million? Hell no. Don't take my thing a ling away from me like that, baby. Uh, yes. Okay, zap. Wait, I was joking. Guess what? I don't have a million dollars, pal. Oh, no. Oh, she's so hot, but nothing's happening. Wake up. Yeah. Fun game, Scribble. Yeah, ruin your life. <laughs> the fat boys are back. And you know, they can never be whack. Everybody starts trying to be the human beatbox. Spitting it on everybody. <laughs> this guy's fat. This pre PH fat. Gave those of us who are chunkier in the music field some hope for the future. I like Chris Markie D because he was like not as fat. He was chunky, but he wasn't as fat as others. My dad's fat. Prince Markie D is kind of just you know cherubic. It was still the fat boys. F that them was fat. First thing I think about is their bad choices of duets. Are doing the twist. Some fat boys twisting, that ain't too cute. The fat boys made the most horrible movie ever called Disorderlies. Let's get Ralph Bellamy, three obese rappers, and just let them go at each other. He looks like Yoda. The results? Step off, homeboy. <laughs> Granted, I was high most of 1987. But I found Disorder Loose to be hilarious. It wasn't Ben Hur, but at that time to see rappers on film was big. They have fun. They, they may rap fun to listen to. You fun next! That's right! My heart began a fierce, mad throbbing full of fright. Why should I be afraid? It was only Chris, my brother! Welcome to Incest Theater. Sex, 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 sex. I couldn't stop reading this book. Everybody was reading them. This is what taught me how to read, was Flowers in the Attic. Because Dr. Seuss wasn't going to teach me. Flowers in the Attic is a story of a brother and sister and their two young siblings who are kept in an attic by their mother. But they sort of like grow up and all of a sudden they're having sex with each other. Right? The kids start getting it all. Oh, hey, hey, hey. It was some freaky stuff. I remember the movie. Give me a chill. Giving myself chills. Just thinking about it. Children be That's what they say when we're together. There's a film version of Flowers in the Attic? Who played in it? Christy Swanson. I think I need to see that movie. Sinners! Let's read, shall we? Somehow we ended up on that filthy, smelly, stained mattress. And that is where he took me and forced me and that in that solid, rigid male sex part of him that had to be satisfied. Baby, don't make me stop now. I'm just getting my thing on. <sighs> Sister Christian, know the time has come. VC was kind of freaky. Who would think, I mean, who would lock their children up and then the children start looking at each other sexual? That's some deep stuff. Up until this point, I think authors had been struggling with how to sort of explain that awkward encounter between brother and sister. And here it is beautifully written in Flowers in the Attic. It's a heartwarming, 
tail with a moral. It's not so bad to have sex with your sibling. Coming up, Michael Jackson goes from bad to worse. You ain't bad. You ain't bad. You ain't nothing. Plus, the real reason so many bloody movies came out in the 80s. Emotions are boring. Let's see some blown up. And which Thundercat turned you on? I've never been attracted to an animal except for Chitara. Next on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1987. And now for Donald Logue's unfinished thoughts on scruples. Do I have an STD? Hey, none of your business, okay? You're just going to have to trust me. Ah, 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 shh, ah, no, no. My sexual history before I met you is none of your business. Yes, I did have sex with John Holmes. Up songs of 1987. Because this boy too has love without a reason, I boy George console you with the breakup songs of 1987. With or without you by you two. Didn't we almost have it all by Whitney Houston? I Won't Forget You by Poison. The breakup songs of 87. Aren't you prepared to let go now? LL Cool J, for me, was like Elvis. Everyone loved LL. LL's always been a ladies' man, but he can rhyme. Oreos eat cool cookies, I'm bad. I'm notorious, I crush you like a jelly bean. I'm bad. And then he crushed the jelly bean. It was just really about him being the illest, and you just felt his energy. Unique, original. That's the only thing I can say about LL style. The big, you know, rope chains, the cut body. He'd have his Adidas, and he had a Kango. And that was really his trademark. I couldn't sport the Kango. I couldn't roll up the one side of my jeans. I stayed away from the LL Cool J look. Why did LL always wear hats? Is his head shape weird, or is he receding? Oh, slow down. Hold your horses. I mean, today, you see, he doesn't wear Kangos. He looks good, unless he had plastic surgery or something. But how can you, you know, replace a head? He looked like he could rob you at the same time he comes out with love. <laughs> he came out with I need love. I was like, what? When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall. And in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. Telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove. For the first time in my life, I see I need love. It just showed that, that a rap ballad could actually happen. He's like, uh-uh, I'm going to go a whole different way. I'm going to rap about love. I would watch the video and get just really mad that it was not me in this video. Who is she? You don't even know her. Scratch my back, we'll get cozy and huddle. I'll lay down my jacket so you can walk over a puddle. LL took it to a whole nother level. LL, you really touched me. I'm a true fan. I wear this for you. I love you. I love a lot of macho movies did come out in 1987. In 1987, there was a lot of really violent movies. Predator, Robocop, and Over the Top. There's a very high body count in 1987. I want action tonight. Predator was cool. It's all bullshit. Very exciting film, starring future politicians Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stick around. Jesse Ventura. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Predator is great because you have wonderful lines like, What the hell are you? They thought they had found the Predator. He was a chameleon, so you couldn't really see him, but they just leveled the entire jungle. And when the creature laughs at the end... <laughs> Stallone was the baddest good guy because he had so much to overcome. He's a tiny, tiny man, and yet a huge action hero. I'm through talking. Over the top was about a truck driver who was trying to save his son, and he arm wrestled people. He had a good work. Did well in Japan. No one wants to watch people arm wrestle. Arm wrestling doesn't even make ESPN 3. Over the top. He took the hat, he turned it around, and then put the finger in it friends could to try and 
get our lower lip to go all the way down our neck like Sylvester did it. Yeah. Fly arm wrestling. Tears were shed. Ah, oh, Robocop was the greatest. He was a cop. He got whacked up, beat up, and they made him a machine. I think they had to be pretty stupid not to think to shoot the guy in the face. He wasted half of Detroit. That was one of the first ones I remember that was just like a lot of stuff getting blowed up. Blowed up real good. That one guy had toxic waste dumped on him. He's all screwed up. He's like, oh, help me, help me. And the car comes and hits him. Oh, it was just, oh, that's gross. Oh, rewind that. Let's see it again. There were a lot of violent movies in 87 because people were sick and tired of human emotion. And who can blame them? Emotions are boring. Let's see some blown up. It's a great British boat. They're very popular in London. Literally everybody had Doc Martens. To, the to me, Doc Martens were the tough kids. The rebel kids, the kind of like too cool for school kids. Back in the day, you'd see Doc Martens on a guy and knew you were in for a rough night. It meant trouble. I liked them because they were ass kicking boots. If I got in a fight, I knew I was going to bring them into play. <laughs> you had to christen them by kicking somebody. My first pair I bought were Ox Blood Six Hole. I had a black pair and I had a red pair too and I had a brown pair. I had leopard skin Doc Martens. I wore them. It was like fishnets and tube skirts. I always thought the girls who wore DMs with little black mini skirts, I thought that was somehow great. I just put like yellow laces in mine or red laces. If you're wearing red shoelaces, you were a skinhead, but you weren't a Nazi skinhead. Wearing white shoelaces, you liked the white people. I had the ladybug shoelaces, and it meant I like ladybugs. Doc Martens made me feel cool. DMs on your feet give you credit on the street. Danger video. You want to see who's bad? Danger video. Danger video. Come on, come on, let's do it. Let's see who's bad, man. Come on, come on, let's go. I'm bad, I'm bad. I remember the bad video because that's when Michael Jackson was mulatto. Martin Scorsese directed Michael Jackson as a gangster in the bad video. Surprisingly, he chose not to cast him in Goodfellas after that. I do remember the mini movie at the beginning of the video. It was Michael Jackson and Wesley Snipes. What was Wesley thinking? He's like, I have to pretend to fight this guy. You either down or you ain't down. So the question is, are you bad or what? Leave me alone. I said, leave me alone. Your butt is mine. Your butt is mine. That's true. He wants to be restrained. He wants an intervention. He had originally asked Prince to be the other gang leader in the big gang fight dance sequence. But Prince wouldn't do it because he didn't want Michael saying, your butt is mine to him. So that's the way it goes down, eh? You come across some ensemble of dancers in a subway wearing zippered clothing, do not engage. Turn around, walk away. Coming up, Adam Sandler's humble beginnings. Shut up, I said. Yes. Plus, the life-altering effects of less than zero. Did I become a drug addict because of it? Yes. And the magic of life. It's a lot easier to go buy the shorts than to do the sit-ups. Next, and I love the 80s strikes back, 1987. But first, log on to VH1.com for everything 80s. Artist info, photo galleries, CD purchases, and great 80s trivia games. Hip Hop Jam of 1987. As we go a little something like this. Hit it! What's up, y'all? This is Doug E. Fresh, feeling good being here with you right now. 
The record that changed the game was Push It by Saw and Pepper with Spinderella. Push it real good. The hip hop classic of 1987. <laughs> Everywhere you go, da 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 da. Full house, full house, full house, full house. I like the theme song. Brought me right in. I remember staying home just about every Friday night watching Full House. Bob Saget has three children. Here's this man grieving the loss of his lovely wife, and he has to raise these three children alone. And it's. Wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. let's see some smiles. Everything is going to work out super great. He doesn't have to raise them alone, because we got ourselves a full house. Your Uncle Jesse's moving in. My best friend Joey is moving in. In the late 80s, moms were out. It was all about dads. I liked Bob Saget. He was Danny Tanner, father. Get down, and I don't mean get funky. <laughs> Uncle Jesse's here! Oh, Uncle Jesse! We got Jenny Stamos! <laughs> Woo! He's teaching these kids how to rock out. Long hair, but clean and in control. You know what I'm saying? Have mercy. All right, limbo! I always remember the silly uncle of a joke. <laughs> the funny guy annoyed the out of me. I was like, you're not funny, and you're not good looking. Why are you here? I am Mary Kay and Ashley. The episodes where Ashley played Michelle, I just couldn't bear to watch. You could just feel her trying too hard, whereas Mary Kate just slipped right into the role. I find those two little monkeys. Who knew that those two were going to grow up to be so hot? Nobody bet on the right pony with that one. Back then, they looked like Manchi G. Manchi G, Manchi G. Hello, we're the twins who will soon make two hundred and fifty-eight million dollars selling <laughs> to other kids around the world. There's always some life lesson to be learned. Both you guys, you gotta remember. Don't be afraid to say no. Kids need limits. They go, oh, um, like they're hugging dad, and they've helped out Uncle Joey and Uncle Jesse. It all just feels good. It just feels right. Ready? Aim. Less than zero, where a preppy college kid comes back to his hometown and finds all of his friends and drug-induced stupor. This is a movie that warned of the perils of drug use, but ultimately made me desperately want to try drugs. I'm gonna throw up. The bucket's under the sink. I knew I always really liked Andy McCarthy. I always just thought he had an honesty about him that was really cool. Well, you f***ed up. You look like f***ed, but hey, no problem. All you need is a better cut of cocaine. Jimmy Gertz in perhaps her most promiscuous role. You don't look happy. But do I look good? James <laughs> Spader is a brilliant actor. Great. I just want you to meet some people. He's so beautiful. And then he always has this, this edge to him. This is not recess. And I'm sick of playing games with you. I thought Robert Downey gave a great, great performance. Oh, really amazing. I think he's an amazing actor. Yes. All right. Got this uncontrollable urge to fall down. Robert Downey's life so closely resembles his acting roles sometimes that I question whether it's acting. <laughs> Did I become a drug addict because of it? Yes, I blame less than zero. <laughs> Jodie Watley was huge in 1987. I'm looking for a new love, baby. Yeah, are you? Good, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for a new love, baby. So I remember that dance. When I made my solo debut, I just wanted to, to make a fun record. My song was Don't You Want Me. Don't you want me? Like I want you. Really simple, speaks to me at 13. I was a fan of her kind of like cool demeanor. And I thought, she's so cool and mellow, and I'm so hyper and annoying. She was always fabulous, the way she looked, her style. My look at the time, obviously, a lot of hair. It was just all moosed and gelled out and hairsprayed, and I fell victim to that too. 
She was just ahead of her time fashion-wise. She was the one who wore those, those big hoop earrings. A crinoline skirt, big belt, bustier kind of top, and chunky jewelry. She had that exotic look. I mean, her face was like... You had a lot of people out there, but it was just something about Jolie Watley was, like, special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out! It's time to play! I love remote control. MTV game show. That was what the show was all about. It was like, who's the biggest couch potato? Name Scooby-Doo's frisky little nephew. Susan. Scrappy-Doo. Yeah, Scrappy-Doo. Five points and control. I'm in. Ken Ober was the host of the program. Colin Quinn was the sidekick. <laughs> this is my dream come true. I remember though, that's the first time I ever saw Adam Sandler. He would come up and just do some funny bits and then get out. Shut up, I said! Yes! You think that's so cool? Who would have known? Young Adam Sandler would come out to be 20, 25 million dollars a picture. They went through a series of uh, women on the show. Carrie Wurr was the piece of ass. Sweet and Ari, I got a roofie with your name on it, baby. The snack break to me was like the big part of the show that was like, wow, they're so wild. They're throwing Cheetos all over the place. I played interesting games like Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive, the woman who played Alice on the Brady Bunch. Gina. Dead. No. You're like, oh, they're still alive. Whoops. <laughs> and we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye, Trace. When you get kicked off the show, the audience would sing. The final bonus round is when you had to name nine music videos just by looking at them. Eight, white snake. Eight, crack. And I don't think I ever saw anybody win once. Number seven, uh, Molly Crew. Oh, 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 time is up. That was a fun show. Thanks for right. playing remote control. Woo. Bye. Oh, gosh, like we're running shorts. Another terrible fashion craze from the 80s. Like biker shorts? Like the tight deals? Unless you are actually on a bicycle, you should not be wearing any type of shorts like that. There was a phase of Lycra shorts as regular clothes. That's weird. It's a lot easier to go buy the shorts than to do the sit-ups. Why do you wear tight shorts if you're not going to be exercising? If you're barbecuing, you don't have to worry about your hamstrings. I had a lot of Lycra. I was a big aerobics guy in the 80s. It was all about Lycra. Ugh. I had a pair of black Lycra running shorts. I will admit to that, yes. Today, everybody still wears Lycra bicycle shorts, especially with Lance Armstrong leading the way. And everybody wants to be known as being hip, young, sexy, and cool. Especially fat people. Awesome. Thunder! 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 I just want to be like, Hanson Hall! I do remember Thundercats because I was living in a dorm with a real pothead back then. Just need a little nap. Thundercats was kind of like the Marvel Comics over-sexualized superheroes meets the cat people. Untie us at once. I loved Lionel's muscles. He was, he was hot. Lionel had protruding arms. I think he was like the McGuire of that time, right? Panthro was my favorite. Panthro? He was the blackest one. The real one. <laughs> I swore it was the cheetah girl. I've never no, been think... attracted to an animal except for Chitara. Imagine what would happen if one of us really did turn bad. She had a banging shape. She was like bronzy. Each of the Thundercats had a different personality. She was actually their personal trainer. And two more, and three more, and four more. I think the breast, uh, I think the, the voluptuous body that she had actually did give you a little excitement if you're a pervert. If all animals were like Chitara, I don't know if I would have a problem with these galleries. It's kind of creepy around here. <laughs> Coming up. When's it get good? Storming the castle with Wesley, Inigo, Fezzik, and the Prince's Bride. 
Nicholas Cage goes baby shopping. I'll be taking these huggies and uh, whatever cash you got. And Denise Huxtable goes off to college. Bill Cosby just didn't want to work with Lisa Bonet anymore, so he goes, give, give, give her her own show. Next on I Love the 80s, strikes back, 1987. But first, this public service announcement. I used to do drugs. And one morning I woke up, I looked in the mirror, and I said, you look frightening. Nobody said quit. And nobody said stop or else. I got sick of it, so I quit. And now, life's the beach. Nerds of 1987. What's happening, hot stuff? Getty Watanabe here, bringing you the Nerds of 1987. Revenge of the Nerds 2. Nerds are back for more. Bud Bundy, horny nerd with a very hot sister. And Gilbert Gottfried, the greedy nerd. The Nerds of 1987, trust me, the donger knows. I think I got the best one. Raising Arizona was like this bright beacon of light in 1987. You had these kind of goofball movies like Short Circuit. And then Raising Arizona was so weird in so many ways. It really stuck with you. One of the greatest comedies around. Uh, Coen Brothers, Nick Cage. Holly Hunter. It was just had so many great imagery. I love the desert and all the, the white trash kind of aspect of it. What's the matter, Ed? My clients left me. Holly Hunter is the police officer, and she falls in love with him. I'm walking in here on my knees, Ed. A free man proposing. That occurred. He's barren. And there's a local family, a furniture salesman who's just had quintuplets. So, so they take Nathan Jr. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> they need diapers for the baby, so he goes into the convenience store to rob it. Son, hey, you got, got a penny on your head. One of the greatest chase scenes of all time when he's getting diapers. And Nick Cage like goes through the house and up through the window and yeah. through the wall. And he ends up picking up the diapers right at the end. Because the baby likes to feel fresh. We all do. That scene uh, where uh, John Goodman and whoever the other guy is tunnel out of the prison when they emerge. Ah! Lifts the other guy out of the muck by the ankle, lifts him up. Oh! <laughs> As a great performance by uh, Tex Cobb, he plays the, the bad guy. There's this guy who shoots lizards on the rock and just this motorcycle raging in. It was so epic. It was brilliant in every single respect. It's great when you go back and watch a movie like Raising Arizona and it's just immaculate and so hilarious and perfect video my name is Luca I live on the second floor when you first listen to it you're just singing along and oh, it's nice you know because she's got a gorgeous voice and it's just a great song it's a great melody and then you actually listen to the lyrics and you're like oh well that's a bouncy song about child abuse do you cry well, you know, when you think about it, the music didn't really match the story, did it? Hey, what kind of what kind of beat should we put with this? This song about abuse, and then it's like da 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 da. It's all upbeat and sassy. Just don't argue anymore. He's upstairs and he's alone and he's being abused. Ah, it's so sad. It really brings the room down. Suzanne Vega is the criminal here. She's singing about Luca's crisis rather than calling Child Protective Services. Here's the thing, Suzanne. Put down the guitar, pick up the phone, make a phone call. Someone's getting smacked around upstairs. Suzanne Vega proved to the world, I can write a song about child abuse and you'll like it. Delicious. It's a different world. Where you come from? 
It was like the hip hopper version of the Cosby show. Heck yeah, I remember a different world. That was hot. Bonds and sex to both. Bill Cosby just didn't want to work with Lisa Bonet anymore. So he goes, give, give, give her her own show. It was uh, Bill Cosby saying to Lisa Bonet, I'm going to make you a star. And Lisa Bonet blowing that. Before you go, can you just do me one little favor? What? Take me with you! <laughs> I couldn't believe that Lisa Bonet left a different world after only one season. And then we had to follow the other roommates. Whitley. Oh my gosh. I loved Whitley. She made the show for me. Whitley, you know, she was a fox. She was such a snob. Denise! Whitley. Welcome back. Different World was about Dwayne Wayne falling in love with this southern bell that he never was going to get until the end of the season before they went to syndication. Hey, my name's Dwayne Wayne. You know, for you to be sitting here all alone like this, it, it pains me. Why are you all alone? Oh, shut up and let's dance. I think Dwayne Wayne was too corny for her. She needed a real man. I need a man here. I definitely had a crush on Dwayne. He was hot. He had style. Would you believe that I actually wore the Dwayne Wayne glasses? I did. Oh, God, what a cornball. It is a god. The show turned out to be a great success. And years and years went by where we're still entertained by it to this day. Good night, honey. Sweet dreams, dear. The uh, Land of Confusion by Genesis is the video that featured what looked to be like HR puffin stuff versions of political figures. Puppets. Crazy puppets. Really ugly, ugly puppets. This was a profound video for Reagan and Gorbachev because before this video, they didn't know who Genesis was. Apparently there was some deep message about peace at the core of it. We were all waiting for Genesis to finally get political. Well, they did it with Land of Confusion. Anyone involved in politics knows how seriously people take protesters who use puppets to make a point. Did Genesis change the world? Is the Berlin Wall still standing? Is Ceausescu still in office? I don't think so. Saddam Hussein? See you later. Why? Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Hi, I'm Steve Gutenberg. Gutenberg! Yeah, the 80s, Gutenberg mania. Gutenberg was sexy, he was the rage. Steve Gutenberg was pretty much like Hitler. He was just taking over territories. Steve Gutenberg was the big screen version of Anson Williams. He just had that potsy spark that lit up the screen. Steve Gutenberg was in five movies in 1987. He did Amazon Women on the Moon, The Bedroom Window, Surrender, Three Men and a Baby, and Police Academy 4. Three Men and a Baby, brilliant. <laughs> That's a baby. Oh, I know it's a baby. What's it doing there? It's sleeping. Ted Dance and Steve Gutenberg. Tom Selleck and one baby. When someone really kicks ass in a movie, we generally call it Gutenbergian. Ah, 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 it's a bird, it's a bird! <laughs> what a Gutenbergian performance! Sergeant Kerry Mahoney reporting for duty, sir. That's my Gutenberg. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Please, thank you. It's Police Academy for the one where they were just so bumbling and they were just sort of knocking heads and really just couldn't do their jobs well? Or was that Police Academy 3? Mahoney, I'm so, so proud of the job you've done. A Gutenberg film from the 90s. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't happen to Goots. At the time, you're like, yeah, this is Gutenberg cat. He's going to be around for a long time. Steve Gutenberg taught me how to be sensitive, kind. Like sensitive with a witty edge. Steve Gutenberg was somebody I could count on when so much was falling apart in the 80s. You really wanted to be his friend. Next time you're down, just say, Gutenberg. Coming up, the words every woman wants to hear. As you wish. As you wish. As you Lessons in dysfunctional relationship from the Prince's Bride. Next on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1987. But first, the...
What the f- moment of 1987? In 1987, Vanna White's autobiography was a bestseller. In it, she recalled one smoking pot and then eating an entire wheat loaf. I think we'd all like to live in a world where the worst thing you can do on drugs is eat a lot of meat loaf. Hey, Vanna, what the f***? Princess Bride by S. Morgan Stern, Chapter One. I love The Princess Bride. It's one of my favorite movies. It's a fairy tale. Peter Falk being the grandfather that he's writing to Fred Savage, who's sick. Is this a kissing book? Wait, says wait. When's it get good? That's a story of uh, Princess Buttercup and the man that she loves, Wesley. And uh, she gets kidnapped by the evil king who wants to marry her. And uh, Wesley comes to her rescue. Drop your sword. The premise of the movie was so not important. It was all the characters. Prince Wesley, she would tell him to do things, and what did he always answer? As you wish. As you wish. As you wish. He was so handsome. I wanted to be Robin Wright Penn, and damn it, I wasn't. Plato, Aristotle, Socrates. Yes, morons. Wallace Shawn saying, inconceivable. Inconceivable! You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I remember Wallace Shawn putting poison into one of the chalices, and then they're playing mind games with each other to figure out where the poison is. A clever man would put the poison into his own goblet because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. <laughs> Andre the Giant was my favorite. I love him. Go in! Get after her! I only dog paddle. Yeah! Andre the Giant, he was kind of like the lovable huge giant. Probably he means no harm. He's very, very short on... Charm. Mandy Patinkin is amazing. My name is Inigo Montoya. Would you have killed my father? Prepare to die. <laughs> I just love the sword fights and all the banter. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill him. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to die. <laughs> When Billy Crystal and Carol Kane were running around as, like, you know, these bizarre it's Jewish the trolls, they were so funny. Liar! Liar! Get back, witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! Peter Cook, towards the end of the film, it was one of those ridiculous Peter Cook voices. Marriage is what brings us together today. It was extraordinarily clever. It was very, very funny. Bye, bye, bye. Have fun storming the castle! The way they filmed it and the way they performed it, it was, it was perfect. And it had the happy ending we all wanted. The end. It's Super Secret TV Formula. The show that deconstructs the TV cliches you know and love. Our TV scientists are hard at work for you. Formula 287, gay but not gay. These pups are killing me. How is he not gay? My insides are going to explode. He was gay in the womb. Don't be a party poop. We promise more secrets will be revealed. Don't miss Super Secret TV Formula. Coming up next, play TV trivia at vh1.com. Have mercy.